A Short History of Ellis Island. This is another JDW Talks. My targeted audience are genealogists, historians, and Ellis Island buffs. And um, I have a small little uh, website there if you want to know more about me. This was recorded in June of 2020. Ellis Island was originally a small island in New York Harbor, closer to the uh, coast of New Jersey than certainly New York. It had a number of names like Gull Island, Oyster Island, because of the oyster uh, beds that were there. They used to hang pirates from it as well. Uh, so that's the name Gibbet Island. Uh, put on quite a show for the people uh, in Manhattan, low Manhattan, who could see that. It was owned by merchant Samuel Ellis, that's where you get the name from, who built a tavern on it that catered to local fishermen. And then finally, in 1808, New York State bought the island, and the same day the federal government took possession, reimbursed the state for that money. It was used for various military projects until the federal government got tired of the fraud that was occurring uh, on New York State's Castle Garden. I'll show you some pictures of that. And they started to phase out Castle Garden, and the United States started to get into the business of regulating immigration. In 1890, they decided to use that island for an immigration station, and they allotted $75,000 to uh, build a wood structure. So here I have a graphic from Judge Magazine. This is from 1887. It's uh, titled, America's Hearty Welcome to the Innocent Emigrant. And all these people are out to fleece these people that are coming in. They've already been fleeced in Castle Garden uh, behind them. Uh, things like uh, money, uh, money exchange uh, percentages and, and things of that sort. And so it, they decided to put an immigration station as far away from New York City as possible to protect the immigrants. Here is a view, a stereo view of Castle Gardens. Uh, it eventually became an aquarium, and today it is the place where you would buy tickets to go on a ferry to uh, the Statue of Liberty, which is in the background, you can barely see it, and to Ellis Island. The island size was doubled to six acres, and then eventually it was over 27 acres by Phil from the New York City subway construction and Grand Central Station, and also from ship ballast, the rocks that they had, uh, uh, that also contributed to the buildup of Ellis Island. So that brings up an interesting question whether Ellis Island is uh, in New York or is it in New Jersey? And in 1998, uh, the federal government made a decision, specifically the U.S. Supreme Court. The original island is shown here in red and then superimposed upon what it looks like today with this 27 plus acres. And by a vote of six to three, the court ruled that the entire landfill part that built over tidelands belonged to New Jersey. And that's about 90 percent of Ellis Island. Uh, and they did that for a number of reasons. One is that there's a lot of tax revenue being generated by the gift shop and other things. And New York State and New Jersey split uh, those uh, pr pr proceeds. In fact, New Jersey had an option of uh, having a some sort of, of uh, uh, graphic on America, the Beautiful Quarters series, and they chose to have a quarter uh, on Ellis Island. The rules were that you couldn't show any part of New York, so it's not looking at the Great Hall area. It's looking across at where the hospital roads were. 
but that's the uh, quarter New Jersey 2017 coin. Ellis Island is called the Island of Hope and the Island of Tears for the immigrants going through. It has been estimated that close to 40% of all current U.S. citizens can trace at least one of their ancestors to Ellis Island. And during its heyday, 70% of the immigrants came through Ellis Island. The types of immigrants changed dramatically in the United States. In 1865, as this Harper's Weekly shows you, the immigrants are mostly from um, northern and uh, western Europe. But during the heyday of Ellis Island, and this is a little bit before 1891, the immigration shifted to southern and eastern Europe. So in 1904, the Bureau of Immigration posted this graphic, uh, put everybody as a race, and I'll blow this up. And you'll see that the number one group that came through uh, were Italians from the south under great economic deprivation. Uh, they divided it from Italians and on the south and the north. And the second group were, were Jews. And uh, they had other reasons besides economics, so that that did play a role. This is a famous uh, graphic uh, in 1905 showing Teddy Roosevelt telling the Tsar to stop your cruel oppression of the Jews. And you see the weights that this person is carrying resembles the Tsar's crown. And all of these um, processes were going on in Eastern Europe that also contributed to the immigration of that group of people. The station opened on January 1st in 1892. You can see it looks nothing like uh, Ellis Island does today. It was built with wood. And there was a fire that completely destroyed this structure in 1897. I have a, I have a laminated uh, newspaper from 1897 in my collection. Uh, indicating that Ellis Island was all a fire. Nobody lost their life, but it was a mess. And so they had to figure out where to go and how to rebuild it. And so they relocated to the old barge office back in Battery Park, back to all that fraud. Uh, they decided to invest $1.5 million for a new facility. And this was the first federal building that they went out and had a uh, competition for the design. It was planned for 5,000 immigrants a day, and that was a, uh, a miscalculation. A lot more came. And here's the old barge office in Battery Park. There's a postcard. And here's the construction of the new building, fireproof brick, um, it opened on December 17, 1900. So the history of Ellis Island from 1900 to 1924, the peak years were 1900 to 1914, when five to 10,000 people every day passed through their gates. In April 17, 1907, over 11,000 immigrants were processed through Ellis Island. Incredible. In 1917, it was used as a World War I Army Hospital and Alien Detention Center. In the 1920s, some of the usefulness of Ellis Island disappeared. In 1920s, the American consulates abroad assumed many of the immigration functions that Ellis Island did. And after 1924, it was mainly used for some nationalities, problem cases, military uses, and alien detention center. And the reason was this, that if one looks at the annual European immigration from 1900 to 1924,
from 1907 to 1914, it averaged over 800,000 people a year, and most of those people were coming from Southern and Eastern Europe. And there was a backlash in the United States against people from those areas. So in 1921, they set up a quota system and they reduced the number of immigrants to 356,000. And you can see um, the immigrants from Northern and Western Europe actually increased. They would allow more people from that than from Southern and Eastern Europe. But they decided to be even more strict. And in 1924, they reduced the amount of uh, immigrants even further, and especially, especially from Southern and Eastern Europe, which was feeding into the Ellis Island station. And so that's one of the reasons why Ellis Island uh, lost its functionality. In 1932 to 1933, for instance, Ellis Island handled less than 5,000 immigrants for the whole year. They were doing that a day, and they were mainly deporting people. Closed on November 1st in 1954. And then the government had a problem. What to do with Ellis Island? The um, General Services Administration decided, you know, a couple years later, that they wanted to sell it. And so they put it up for sale. Uh, they uh, suggested all sorts of things that it could be used for. And there was an initial outcry. And President Eisenhower suspended the sale, but they tried again. And they put it on the market in 1958. They did get a bid of $200,000, which they rejected. They wanted more than $6 million. In 1965, President Johnson protected that island by making it part of the Statue of Liberty National Monument. But the Congress has never really supported upgrading that island. It didn't provide much funding. In 1976, there was a limited opening to the public of Ellis Island. And in 1982, President Reagan asked Lee Iacocca to head a private effort to raise funds for the restoration and preservation of not only the Statue of Liberty, which was approaching its 100th birthday, but also Ellis Island. Thus, the Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation started. And here are some pictures in my collection uh, of how badly it looked, overgrown, broken windows. Here is the Great Hall. Uh, in a, a state of disrepair, that opening slide of mine that showed a, uh, a tile from Ellis Island probably came from one of these columns. The roof tiles were in good shape, but the rest of the area were, was in pretty bad shape. Um, in 1986, the Statue of Liberty was 100 years old. There was a big uh, ceremony. You can see this dollar uh, coin was issued uh, which also shows Ellis Island on the coin. And in 1990, the Ellis Island restoration was dedicated in September 10th. At the same time, opening of the Immigration Museum and the Wall of Honor. And I'll talk about the Wall of Honor in a second. The wall generated $43 million by 1993 for restoration projects. It was really uh, uh, a wonderful idea for fundraising. And the renovation was done entirely, entirely with private funds. Um, we put up, my wife and I put up a number of uh, our ancestors on the wall. Um, you have to pay for this, uh, this honor. You get this nice uh, um, scroll and there's actually an index to the names on the wall. So if you find your own ancestor's name there that someone put on that wall, you can actually buy the certificate uh, with their name on it. And, and I have a brochure on it. If you don't keep their names alive, who will? So usually walls of people's names are 
uh, commemorating uh, bad events, at least in this case, we're honoring our immigrants who made a new life here. And here's what the wall looks like. Um, it's very impressive and there is an index uh, that you can go to a particular wall site, uh, photograph it, make, uh, um, you know, tracings of it, whatever you, whatever you want. In 2001, in April, the American Family Immigration History Center opened. This was a big event for genealogists because they opened an online database of arrival records and information about ships at Ellis Island. And they were swamped with people that those first couple of weeks, that was the first time we had this major database online. And it made the 51 plus million Port of New York arrival records available to everyone. And I guess because I contributed a number of names uh, on the Ellis Island wall, uh, I got this, this cute uh, Charter Founder Certificate of Appreciation uh, with my name on it in grateful recognition of your outstanding support in helping to create the American Family Immigration History Center at Ellis Island. Hurricane Sandy in 2012 did a number on Ellis Island uh, and they had to close it down for a while, um, really a disastrous uh, event. In 2015, the museum was renamed the Ellis Island National Museum of Immigration. They wanted to broaden it and I should point out that that wall, that wall of honor, is a wall of honor for immigrants. They did not have to come through Ellis Island. They could have come through other ports like Boston, Philadelphia, etc. Remember, only 70%, only, uh, not everybody, went through Ellis Island during the 1892 to 1924 heyday. So today, as of June 8th, 2020, the Ellis Island uh, Statue of Liberty is temporarily closed because of the COVID virus pandemic. And hopefully it will open again. It was a major tourist spot in the city of New York in that area. So I will, I will end this. Uh, this is a, uh, a fundraising uh, uh, item that was sold, a piece of the, of the Ellis Island tile. Uh, uh, numbered. Uh, I can picture all my relatives, all my ancestors came through Ellis Island passing by one of the columns with this tile in it. So this is a PowerPoint talk on JDW Talks. I now have six census talks on YouTube, including valuable information on the 1950 census, which will become public in April of 2022. I will have five Ellis Island talks eventually here. That's my plan, including how to find difficult people and the name change myth. And I have now at least three natural history talks, and I'm planning to maybe do some more of those. So thank you for your attention and coming here. And if you enjoyed this video and the others, spread the word. Thank you.